Well, just another great afternoon. Got some rain that we desperately needed, unless, of course, you're along the river on a canal, but where I'm at, we needed the rain. But just want to welcome everybody here as always. It's a beautiful Tuesday. We're up, we're alive, and we just want to give God a thanks and just, again, praise His name. I want to tell a story, and I've used it a couple of times in communion meditation, maybe in a sermon, but I think what's going on right now in the world, maybe this might help a little bit. Story about a young man when he was in high school, he was a very good wrestler, kind of wild, kind of did whatever he wanted. The summer before his senior year, he met a good friend and went to CIY and invited him to church and he became a Christian, so much so that he not only just gave his life to Christ, but he really wanted to do something for it. And so he went to a Christian college and became a youth minister. And he always stayed in great shape. Well, one of the things he wanted to do and felt was important, he wanted to do inner city ministry. And so he said, I'm going to New York. I can defend myself, I feel, feel safe, but I feel that's where Christ needs to be. I can be an example. Well, he was on the subway. It was a perfect little afternoon, really, just coming back from a meeting, just had all kinds of time. He was just enjoying the scenery and, and the, you know, and there's hardly anybody in this, there's just a few people in the, in the car there. When it stopped, and this man came on, big, strong man, you could tell right away that he was been drinking, and that he probably hadn't washed maybe in a week. His clothes were disheveled, his hair was oily and greasy, he was staggering, he smelled, and he was mumbling and talking to himself, swearing and stuff, and people were kind of nervous a little bit. And he comes in and he starts yelling at people to get out of his way, and he pushes one man out just so he could be in another section of the train. And my friend, and the, the guy that, that, that I'm telling the story, is saying, all right, I'm ready for something like this. If he tries to hurt anybody, anything happens, I got him. I'll put him in his place that quick. Well, as he's sitting there, the guy gets even more agitated. He wants to sit in his place where a woman and holding a baby, and he tells them to get out as a woman gets he tries to kick her just misses her almost hurts the baby and she scrambles to the other side and the man says that's it I'm put on I'm on this train for a reason God has put me on this train for a reason to show him that we're not going to accept things like this that he's a heathen that he's a sinner and I'm going to put him in his place and as the man was mumbling he was trying to rip the seed out he said I got to get the man mad at me first and all of a sudden the man looks at him and he blows him a kiss, and the guy just goes, irate. I'm going to rip you from one end to the other. And his friend said, this is it. He said, I felt like the big super Christian S was on my chest. I'm going to take care of business right now. And as it got close, he just said, let this man take a swing, and I'm going to knock him into tomorrow. Just as they got close, they heard this voice. And it just said, hey, 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 hey. And they both stopped and turned. And there was this little old man sitting there. And the little man's eyes were focused on the drunk. Not on the young man, but on the drunk. And as the man turned and looked at him, what do you want? And he edged closer. The young youth minister said, go ahead. Make a move. And he said, I had him lined up. One punch, and I'm going to knock his head right off. And the little old man, like he had a string on this guy. Come here. Come here for a minute. And the drunk, what do you want? He says, sit down. Sit down. So calm. It was almost like he had control of this man. And this drunk sat down. He said, hey, hey. Looks like you're not having a very good day there, are you, buddy? And he says, you don't understand. You know who what happened. He said, no, 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 tell me. I, I would like to know. He says, well, about a month ago, I lost my job. Then my wife left me. I don't have anything anymore. Nothing. I don't know what to do. Nobody cares. Nobody will listen to me. I don't know what to do. And the woman said, oh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that this has happened to you. You know, I had a wife too, and I know how you must miss it. And I think, you know, what, can we talk? It was like all of a sudden this big man puts his head on the lap of this old man. The old man just kind of just rubbing his back saying, hey. I can help you, and I can find you help. You're worthy, and I think we can do something. Well, the young minister, the youth minister, was in awe. He got off his stop, 
with tears in his eyes. He thought, oh my goodness, what I thought I was doing right, or I thought I was better than this guy, that I was going to put him in his place because I'm a Christian and I have a right to do so. I saw what Jesus was all about in this little one. He showed me what Christianity is all about because it's about love. It's about compassion. It's about forgiveness. And we have to be so careful now in this day and age that people should want to become Christian because what Christ offers us. But too many times, we put too much moralistic values in it that you've got to do this or you can't. And people think that that's what Christianity is, the do's and don'ts. And it's not. Christ didn't do that. Christ saw people. Christ loved people. And he knew he could change who they are and give them the gift. And that's what we got to see. There's no taking sides this, that, and what's going on out there. It's showing who Christ is. That's how people come to God. We don't scare them into it. Oh, I'm better than you're going to hell. That does not work. What works is by our actions. What works is by our compassion. What works is that we show love. Because that's what God is all about. That's what Jesus is all about. And as all this is going on, we need to make sure we show love and compassion. That's what brings people to God. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm missing you people again. Service is running like normal. 9.30. If you're getting, you're not feeling ready for it, that's fine. We got a live stream. I'm looking over here at Joey real quick. He's got it ready, so we can now, it will be live stream and also taped at the very same time. So, we're going to be ready to go with that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear, precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are and what you do. Continue to bless us, dear God. Continue to watch over us. But more than anything, we pray for the courage to stand up for you. It has nothing to do with anything else but standing up for you and showing you the love and forgiveness and the kindness that you've shown us. We know we're all sinners and we need your grace because that's how it works. We thank you for that. Just continue to teach us, to give us that knowledge, but just continue to just fill our hearts with that love and our eyes with your eyes so that we just, we see people. Not people in our way, but people that we can bring to you. We love you, we adore you. It's your son's name we pray, amen. Hey, have a wonderful day. Talk to you Thursday.